Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. D'Anthony, we got one of our faves on. I know yeah. I say that a lot, but we have a lot of favorite <clears throat> guests, and whenever we can get just a small portion of their time, mm-hmm. it's an enjoyable hour and a half or however long we talk to people. Mm-hmm. Um, Barnes Courtney, the musician, rock star, is on the show today. I'm actually a gigantic fan. Um, last time we did this interview with him, we were in Austin, Texas, and uh, it was kind of last minute friend of a friend. Yeah. And listened to his music on the way <clears> over <throat> in the car, and I was like, oh shit, this guy's amazing. Mm-hmm. And we had him on the show, and he was really fucking funny and really personable, and he crushed the show. The, the episode crushed. Everybody was like, dude, you got to have that guy back on again. It took a quarantine, but we got him back on th- again today. Yeah, I'm surprised he came back. I mean, after I upset his friend. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, right. yeah. It was really funny. I man. started going hard on how much I hated orphans. But it was, a, it was a bit like no one hates orphans. That's irrational. But apparently one of the guys that was there was an orphan and he got up and walked out of the room. <laughs> it did. That's a true story. Like I've never – like you have to – I understand that those are sensitive issues sometimes. But if somebody like – <laughs> like if you were left-handed or something and somebody just like i really fucking hate left you can't get upset about that no, obviously they're that they person's just being a weirdo yeah yeah of course like of i don't course. hate how, how could you hate orphans batman's an orphan for christ's sake yeah you can't you can't but uh homeboy was really offended he was super offended. barnes thought it was hilarious and uh he's on the show today he's live from uh Right outside of London, I think he said. Um, it's one of those things where we're all trying to get used to this weird technology of Zoom and FaceTime and pauses and yep. fucking I mean, none internet of it's, issues. None of it's weird. Of well, we usually cut it out, it is to be honest with you. But uh, if you see a blurry face or somebody moving. My parents were watching the John Brankus episode the mm-hmm. other day. Um, and they were like, man, he was moving around a lot the first 10 minutes. And I was like, you're trying to find light mm-hmm. and where you look good in and it's like you know fuck man if you're talking to somebody for a goddamn hour and a half on the phone you want to look pretty at least presentable at some time so uh if you if you see some of the cameras get wonky just know that we're in two different continents trying to to put an interview together out for the people because we're going every single day monday through saturday actually on drinking bros and uh derek white's show is on saturday we take sundays off for well for jesus no no no, we don't. Uh, we just take Sundays off for us, to be honest with you. But uh, we'll be here every single day with you through the quarantine. As always, we got some sponsors for this whole fucking shit wagon on the air. First and foremost is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Look, I could tell you that everything's 25% off in the store. Pillows, sheets, mattresses, adjustable bases. Or I could tell you what amazing humans they are. Um, Dan, tell them the story about the Chick-fil-A. We just got a bunch of Chick-fil-A. So did a bunch uh, yeah. of listeners. Yeah, so there was a there was a thread in Drinker Bros the other day um, where someone just happened to ask, like, hey, are ghost beds actually good mm-hmm. or whatever the fuck? And I don't know how many people it was, but a fuckload of people responded in the comments. And uh, then I made a joke, like, uh, uh, the marketing director for Ghostbed is in that group, right? So Rich, uh, yeah. Obviously. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> He was just asking, he was like, thanks for all the comments. Is there anything anybody needs or whatever the fuck? I don't remember what he said. But I was like, you know, what would really be good is if you send the host, Dan, a bunch of Chick-fil-A. <laughs> uh, that'd be super great of you. Yeah. And, and he, I like, he, he uh, messaged me later. And he was like, hey, what's your address again? And I'm like, uh, why? And he says, don't worry about it. So apparently he's sent us. All of us. Chick-fil-A. And he sent out an email to everybody. So this is the process he had to go through. He saw your name. For those of you out there that are on the receiving end of this, and if you received mm-hmm. an email from Ghostbed, it's legit. Um, <clears throat> he saw your name on Facebook, cross-referenced it with their catalog of uh, uh, purchase history, yeah, yeah, yeah. found your name and address, and then he emailed you and said, hey, confirm your address, and then all right, what day is he going to be home? So he's sending, they're apparently sending everybody who had uh, gave a good review uh, on, on oh yeah of, of ghost bed and yeah. uh my wife was at home she just texted me and she was like hey dude a bunch of chick-fil-a just showed up at the house like how amazing is this and i was like shit rich from ghost bed sent mm-hmm. that so uh those guys are great man I, not only do we love their their products and everything they do there but uh they genuinely try to help people out and just do cool shit all the time uh right now again everything's 25 percent off and then they have a 36 month pay-as-you-go program with no interest um so if you're looking to quarantine and comfort you can get a mattress, and that'll knock it down to what twenty five bucks a month, something, or something like that. Like that. Yeah. 
It's great, man. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, next up, we got a new one. We got a red alert. We got a new sponsor in the house. Uh, manscaped.com, dude. This this is speaking something into existence. Is what I feel like what <clears throat> we did for this. Yeah. Um, talk about shaving our balls and mm-hmm. our fucking taints all goddamn day. And then they reached out and they were like, hey, man, we actually do that. Um, and they're yeah. a massive company. So yeah, we, it's a big company. Yeah. We got the full shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, look, the, the NFL draft is here. It's all about new beginnings. And our sponsor, Man- Manscaped, is uh, here to give your balls a new beginning as well. It's the only men's brand that is dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. Um, that's, that's the honest-to-God's truth. It is, yeah. You got the pack. <clears throat> you just used it um, on your balls. You said it was the best shaver of yeah, all time so for your Yeah, so it's a ceramic time. blade. One, Mm -hmm. and it has a really nice guard on it, so it doesn't... Like, I usually when I'm fucking tooling around down there, you'll nick yourself one or two times. Yeah, we all have. Yeah, Yeah, it's just a pain in the ass. Plus, it hurts, and it makes you look like you've got uh, some kind of fucking venereal disease, which is not great. Yeah. Um, And I'm someone who exposes myself to strangers a lot, and I just don't want the reputation. Like, I don't mind being the the person that pulls his dick out and, and, and upsets people, but I do mind people thinking i've got herpes i don't want that so yeah you know this has been a, a godsend for me dude for limited time subscribers uh to it gets uh not one but two free gifts the shed travel bag and the patented high performance anti-chafing manscape boxer briefs um but look this this is the best in the biz uh fucking for this shit i was using dude i was using like old school ch- trimmers man which oh like a face trimmer yeah dude that's for like no a good. fucking like a barber trimmer down there that's no good yeah it was one of those things where we all kept one underneath the sink and it was just like all right cool that that pops out you know every two months or whatever it is now you got a fucking you have a full kit dude just to shave your ball sack up yeah uh, and it's it's the best it's classy too so you walk over and you're like all right sweet I, every guy should have one of these to be honest with you we've talked about it. A million times on the show. Finally, they, they reached out and they were like, hey, dude, mm-hmm. we'll do it. <coughs> Go to manscaped.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Gets you 20% off and free shipping. Uh, you got to use the right tools for the job down there. Manscaped.com, M A N S C A P E D.com, promo code Drinking Bros. 20% off and free shipping. That's it, man. Once you have one of these, you're good to go, dude. Mm-hmm. You were good to go in this life. Uh, last but not least, Talking about KillCliffCBD.com, D'Anthony. 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Yeah, it's the good stuff. The real good stuff. The good stuff. Uh, they got grape, they got orange, <laughs> they got mango, and uh, they're doing 30% off with the promo code Drinking Bros. That gets shipped to your house, full case, dude, mm. and free shipping, which is a big fucking deal when you're yeah. ordering cans. It is, yeah. And if you haven't ordered it before and you don't know which one of the flavors you like, they have a variety pack that you can buy the first time. Yep. Just in case. Best so in the biz. The a little bit. Best in the biz. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros. Uh, and you will not piss hot on a, on a drug test. We have a lot of military and first responder. Uh, 80% of our audience is made up of that, actually, yep. um, who listen to the show. And uh, look, man, there is no weed or, or anything in there. No THC. Um, so you're good to go at KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. 30% off. Uh, let's get into the interview with Barnes Courtney, Jamie. And uh, if you have not listened to Barnes' uh, last album, 404, I highly recommend it. Uh, God damn it, man. It's, it's a banger, dude. He's, he could be one of the biggest rock stars in the world one day. Very Maybe, shortly. Yeah. That's, what I, that's what I feel. It takes the right type of breaks for this type of shit, so yeah. you never know. But uh, He's got the attitude for it. Yeah, and he's one of the funniest dudes there is. So uh, here is Barnes Courtney. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We've got one of our favorites uh, on the show. Barnes Courtney is back. You're you're one of our favorite musicians. Is that your brother? Who's who's there with you? My dad. Hey, hi. Oh, hey. My brother Felix. (laughs) Jude. Hey, Jude. Jude. Is he named after Jude Law since you raised Jude Law's child for a while? Uh, Yes. Uh, Actually, he was, but we didn't realize what he was like then. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know that. I had no idea. Oh, that's great. Do they know know the Jude Law baby story? I, you got and they've gotten it. Do you guys know that I raised Jude Law's child for a year? Um, oh, yeah. 
kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're aware. Are you disappointed in me? <clears throat> he didn't say anything. Dad? <laughs> where, 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 where are you at? Are you in London right now? No, I moved away to escape the COVIDs. Oh, I you moved did? away uh, for this lockdown to my parents' house in Felixstowe, which is kind of like a small village just on the edge of the countryside. Town. Okay. Town. It looks gorgeous. It looks like you're walking through an endless house. How big is that house? Oh, it's enormous. A gilded palace it is, <laughs> filled with all kinds of that, fanciful that, pillows and boots. That's what it looks like. Trinkets. <laughs> No, it's just a regular size, you know, sort of house. This is a garden back here. Look, this. Yeah, that's that's big. There. I look. I was that's, expecting that's like the coal the... shed where my father used to beat me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever escape bonds, you will be a man, and I did. <laughs> escape the old woodshed of uh, of the Courtney household. <laughs> um, no, it, it looks nice. I, I was expecting like a, like a flat or something, but this is uh, yeah. What do you what do you what does your dad do? My dad, nothing. He was teaching uh, Russian for a bit. Very esoteric uh, business he has. But now uh, he just, you know, he just cries a lot. Tells me how disappointed in me he is. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> things of that nature. They've got to be proud. Look, last time you were on the show, your album was your new album was about to come out. It was a banger, man, front to back, dude. Um, congratulations on that. I didn't actually write any of it at all. That's not even my voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be awesome no, if you didn't it was like oh yeah got, i had katie perry's writer for that she wrote the whole album i literally just had to, to have the photo taken for the cover and it was done it was amazing <laughs> that's it it was a plug and play of like who who the next rock star should be and it was me no i knew i knew you were getting big when i heard you in a food line which is a like the shittiest grocery store we have here and you were on the loudspeakers at Food Lion, and I was like, oh, shit, Barnes is starting to get pretty big now. That's what I tell the ladies, but it doesn't seem to impress them that much. I'm like, babe, do you like car commercials? Do you like uh, the soundtrack in supermarket stores? <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you're shopping for produce, do you ever listen to the radio that they've got playing in there? I bet like, everyone man. who works there hates everyone who's on every playlist. Right? They have to. Because <laughs> oh, it's yeah, the yeah, same exactly. goddamn seven songs all day. It's Natasha Bedingfield. Um, I don't know who that is. The rest is still unwritten. You know the song that was on the hills. She was a she's I've British. I've got a story about that lady. Please tell me. I had a crush on her forever. Um, back she in the day. She does feel the rain on your skin, lady. Yes, that's it. She's, she's lovely. She and then her. <laughs> she's got a. I think her brother did something musically as well. Um, but uh, yeah, he, yeah, she moved out yeah, to LA and, and did the whole thing, and then had that hit song on the hills for a long time, and then she just pretty much just lives off of those those royalties. I, I would imagine. Imagine if all you had to do was just write one really, really, really good song, and that was just your whole life figured out for the rest of. I mean, that's my job, but I haven't done it. So imagine, imagine if that's all, <laughs> that's all you had to do. Your last album, I it had to have done really well, man. I felt like fuck. There was like at least three or four huge hits that were in constant rotation that I always heard on the radio here. Well, I keep mailing the guys at the Grammys, but none of them reply to any of my emails. It's really weird. I know. I I've been shocked. sending them dick pics for years, and they haven't said shit to me. No, they haven't. <laughs> I'm like, guys, I, I am at full mast. What more do you want from me? What kind of uh, <laughs> I think my kind next of commitment for you? I think my I next actually, move is I'm going to start sending in actual eggplants. You should. <laughs> yeah. Like to send 30 <laughs> eggplants. Not the emojis, <laughs> just the fucking eggplants. And then one themselves. business card. Yeah. <laughs> and it just has my name, no phone number, no email address. I think that would get the job yeah. done. I don't know. And then in fine print at the bottom, in beautiful flowery English, you reveal that the eggplant had been stored in your anus for several mm. weeks before sending it over. Oh, I can't remember. So I have a story for you. I watched Butt Boy last night. It came oh, out. Did you? Fuck, I haven't watched it yet. It Where, just came it out last night. So there's a movie that is out now that was a guy on our show who's a friend of ours named Tyler Kornack. Um, he's got a, an Instagram called Tiny Cinema. It is, he wrote and directed a movie called Butt Boy about a man who is stuffing everything he can up his ass. He goes in for a prostate exam at the beginning of the movie, gets so turned on by it that he starts hiding things up his ass. Children, animals, like floppy disk, like you name it. And it's shot <laughs> as 100% drama. 
it's a slippery slope. You know, once you get one thing up there, it's hard to stop. That's exactly what he said in the movie. He was just like, hey, man. Um, so the police were after him and the whole thing plays off like a kind of like an 80s cop drama where they're trying to pin him to this this child's disappearance. And the child's been hidden in his ass for 12 years. Here's, here's one of the reviews. Here's one of the reviews. Yeah, read the it's, review. It's called uh, the title of the review, which is a four out of five star review, by the way. It's called Different Than the Title Suggests. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, unbelievably weird and surreal. Why did this get funded? Uh, but I'm also glad it got funded. Uh, don't go in thinking it's a poop and fart joke movie. You will be disappointed. Yeah. And the New York Times today, it was, it was their <laughs> Critics Choice movie of the day. And it's, it's literally about this guy chasing down this dude who's, who's stuffing all these things up his ass. And then they've got to try to figure out how to get the things out of his ass. I'm not going to give away the ending. The ending was crazy as shit, but uh, it is shot like 100% drama, and uh, it is all about stuffing Five things Five-star review in their ass. Uh, from a man named Blake. Maybe, yeah. Probably a man named probably. Blake. It's shot as a drama? Oh, yes, yeah. Like a Mr. Darcy it's, kind of scenario? Yes, 100% serious the whole way through. So yeah. this guy says, this has affected me, and he spelled affected right, so you know it's going to be a good review. Ah. Uh, when I finished watching this, I realized my butt was sore, my dog and TV remote had gone, had gone missing. Yeah, but that's the review. That's Those it. are two of the items that that is stuffed up his ass in the movie. Is are a, you guys a dog, worried? a full size dog, and a, and a remote control? Full size, like like a terrier, like your size dogs. That's all right. That's yeah. still big. I mean, you know, it is big. That uh, is big. I've never forcibly inserted anything into my. It just may shock you. That was that, that was my next question to you. Yes, you were well, not. I'm surprised. No, English, you're too posh to to be putting stuff up your ass all willy nilly. <laughs> <laughs> that? <laughs> that? <laughs> you must be joking. <laughs> English people love. I had a. Yo- I went to like one yoga class before this lockdown happened, trying to better myself. And uh, that's always a mistake, teacher, by the way. Don't ever do that. Oh yeah, don't, don't try to better yoga. yourself. No, yeah. bettering yourself. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you saying? That I'm beyond help? I, I'm just, saying just that because... we, we collectively, as a group, are beyond help. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, how dare you? And it is better to, uh, you know, accept the universe as it is than persist in delusion, no matter how gratifying that delusion is. So That's true. Let's just be dirtbags. Yeah, let's just all be dirtbags. Anyway, so the yoga teacher put his finger on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> this did is you, a cry for help, you assholes. Did you, <laughs> I am confiding in you. Did you get a free class at least? I didn't, and that sounds like a joke, but like it really that really happened. That really, really was a thing that took place. I went into the yoga class and I was attempting to find my higher self and he put his finger between my butt cheeks uh under the thinly veiled guise of helping me find my sitting bone which i'm pretty sure isn't even a real thing no way that's sitting uh, sitting bone is your vestigial tail it is yeah that's what dr larry yeah. larry nasser got popped for out here with all those gymnasts yeah you don't need to out here we mean out here that was in, in the united states he's in, in mission obviously England. i knew yeah. it was your vestigial tail i was just testing to see if you two knew <laughs> <laughs> i know but there's well, like it's not even inside the crack of your ass really it's higher up right it's right near the top of the crack usually yeah it's a uh, it depends on the person you ever dated a girl with a tail yeah, I'm glad you asked. Did you? Did you? You've done your homework on this one. No, I have not actually. Um, this was uh, a friend of mine did, and the the entire time he dated this girl, she was super hot. All I wanted to see was the fucking tail. And so, finally, one night he got her drunk enough and was just kind of like kissing her from behind, and he's like, "Hey, swoop around the back, and I'll lift up lift up her shirt, and you can see this." And I was like, I, it, "It's a little. It moved a little bit, um, and it was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen." But apparently. It's kind of common. Like, there's a few thousand people that have this. What's your story about it? Uh, I was making that up. I didn't realize you had a real tale story. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, there's, there is some women and dudes, dudes too, by the way, that have a little tail. Alec, if you look it up, there's a medical term for it. There's a medical condition. Yeah, called. it's called being a fucking mutant. Hey, man, it's just a little knobby movie I feel like thing, you would dude. have better balance if you had a tail, obviously. That's why, One would think, that's but why they exist. It's not big. It's kind of like the like a knuckle here. So it, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a stub. Around. It's yes. a useless stub of a tail. Well, maybe you could get it's a prosthetic like, affixed to the end of it. Well, I asked. I was like, dude, why didn't she ever get this removed? It doesn't make sense mm-hmm. to me. And uh, Because it's your actual spine, isn't it? You can't just have a hunkier spine That's what off. I heard, yeah. That's what I heard. You can't. I'll, so it's I'll do it. There. If you're out there and you've got a tail and you want to get rid of it, 
Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Free tail removal. Steady hands. In these difficult times Mostly. during lockdown. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been doing at home. Horizons. I've been doing at home medical procedures for years now. Yeah. So it's not that big a deal. It's honestly. not that big a deal. It's not. No. Um, hey, let me ask you about. So since the album came out, what's what was the response like? And then has it changed your life at all? Um. I don't know. I mean, I kind of ignored all of the uh, things surrounding the release of the album and just went straight into the headspace of the next one. I think uh, part of what drives me as an artist is just a constant feeling of uh, inferiority. And well, no, not really. Uh, I just I don't know. I, I get bored of the music by the time it's out. Uh, I'm done with it. I'm on to the next one. Yeah, because you're a guy who's always touring. Like, I looked at your tour schedule before the pandemic and all that shit. It was gnarly. I mean, you're, you're out there every single night, if it, it seems like. Um, I would have to imagine a guy like you is probably recording during a time like this. So next time you go back out on tour, you have new shit to play. Is that what's going down in the quarantine? I'm so relieved uh, that I have this extra time, to be honest. Because my record label was freaking out. They were like, Buzz, you need a new single right now. And I'm like, I've got nothing. Like, when your tour starts next week, it's like, I've been playing Le Legend of Zelda for the past four months. So now <laughs> I've got this big, like, section of time. And it's great. I, I don't feel under pressure. I feel like I can just take my time, you know. I wrote a song about being a dance champion the other day. Uh, they didn't like that so much. But... <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Hey, let's let's put the prettiest male rock star we have out there with a song about him being a dancer. I just champion. had a really good idea. What if somebody wrote like a modern version of The Devil Went Down to Georgia, but it's gay dudes in a dance competition against the devil who's also gay? Oh, <laughs> boy. Is there a loser in that situation, though? Uh, um, no. I think there can only be winners. Same here. In including the people watching. Everyone's a winner in that scenario. Yeah, they are. Goddamn right they are. Um, so you're writing a new album right now? Yeah, just uh, just like jamming around, writing different bits and bobs. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just like pretty much. Well, I'm working on an EP at the moment, um, just of like acoustic, introspective songs. Because uh, it's a weird one, isn't it? Being in isolation, it kind of forces you to delve deeply into yourself and uh, confront strange and exotic problems that you never thought you'd have. You know. Yeah, and from from a musician's standpoint, uh, one would argue that when this quarantine is over and everybody is able to go on tour again, it should be an explosion of music because you've had all this time off to actually record and think and, yeah, do something. Unless I pull a fast one on my audience and come out morbidly obese with, like, a belly button ring. Like, ah, <laughs> surprise, my <laughs> Surprise, I'm 300 pounds. Here we go. <laughs> Because you stage dive at every concert, too. No one would put their hands up for you at 300 pounds. Yeah, well, they don't have to. It's my concert. I'll perform as I like. <laughs> uh, I want to get into uh, – there was a thing we did on uh, Ross Patterson Revolution last year where Rolling Stone ranked their top singers of all time. I'd like to get your thoughts on it as an actual musician because my thoughts are bullshit. I – I, I don't know. You would know the vocal power of these people better than I would, right? Oh, I, I just listen to my entire back catalog on repeat. I don't waste my time on other musicians' music. <laughs> <please>. <laughs> uh, number one, Aretha Franklin. Oh, she's phenomenal, man. Aretha Franklin. But, I mean, how can you ever even – I don't trust anyone that doesn't like Aretha Franklin. Like, you've got Same. something wrong with you if you don't think that she's amazing. Did you see when uh, – she sung as a really old lady for President Obama at some huge award ceremony. Yes, she destroyed, dude. I saw and that. She destroyed. She's like, most people lose their voices when they get to the age of 70. Paul McCartney sounds <laughs> like a bag of strangled cats. Yeah. Um, yeah, so does Steven Tyler, by the <laughs> way. Steven Tyler. Yeah, we just we saw Paul Aerosmith. McCartney. Yeah, well, we saw Aerosmith, what, open up for Post Malone. and It was the Super Bowl last year. God damn. Or they closed. Post Malone opened for him. Yeah. Um, God damn it. Steven Tyler sounded like shit. Yep. And he's, he's fucking no. 70. Yeah, dude, he's 70. He sounded right. like shit? Yeah. Oh, I that, mean, his voice was clearly heart. his voice was clearly weak, and they had the gains turned up so loud that you couldn't hear shit. That, that breaks my heart. I love that dude. I when know. I was 16, I cut up one of my great-grandmother's blouses and stole a bunch of scarves from uh, all the old lady drawers that, that she had in abundance. And I was like trying to model my whole persona on Steven Tyler. That guy was my hero. 
And now he's sort of like scuttling about with his weird Skeletor voice. Yep. Mm -hmm. That makes me very sad. I know. Yeah, he needs to go back on the Heron probably. Drugs always yeah. make everybody better, <laughs> yeah. you know? That's true. If you're listening out there in these trying times, know that the answer to all of your problems, great or small, always lies in recreational drug. Oh, yeah. Dan's smoking weed as we speak. Got a little pause there. That's all right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually writing a book right now called, uh, or titled rather, How to Do Drugs Like an Adult. Now. Oh, How to Do Drugs Like an Adult? Yeah. yeah. I, look, it's a good thing. Um, I would definitely, definitely put that out like ASAP right now because I everybody know, right? and their mother's doing drugs. I would, I would certainly hope so. What's happening over here? Uh, Barnsey, can you get to a, a, a spot with better Wi-Fi? That's the, oh, hashtag, well, ha hashtag quarantine problems here. On, I feel like on all these though, as we're doing like the you know the Today Show and everybody's doing interviews, like yeah. it's always about the Wi-Fi. Yep. It's ruining my timing. This, it's it's this lag is ruining my comedic delay. Yeah, you're moving around a lot though. You're moving around a lot, Barnsey. Yeah, what can I say? You know. I'm a fun time guy. Are, I'm from a, a wild stallion. I are, need to gallop. Are people I can't be confined to one space? I'm a multifaceted human. I'm usually doing like a thousand and one dance moves in the space of 45 minutes. I can't handle being sat still in this gilded prison. That's true. You put on one of the very best live shows out there. Um, my God, man. And yeah, you're, 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 you run around like Mick Jagger does. Well, I take a lot of drugs. Um, <laughs> I remember once I was backstage with uh, my old bass player, Milky, who's this five foot nothing model um, from Port Rush in Ireland. I met her at a festival um, and uh, had no idea if she could play bass. But you know when you meet people and you're like, you just have it, or whatever it is. Like, you got a huge presence and I need you in my band. Um, and I remember it was our last show and she'd racked up five lines each for the two of us. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I like to party every now and again, but I don't do five lines of coke before I go on. I said, Milky, my, my heart's going to explode. And she just looks at me with this like super dead expression. She goes, pussy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm with her on that one. Uh, yeah, five lines is kind of just getting the party started for yeah, you, Yeah, that's, that's an, it depends on the size of the line, obviously. Like I've done half an eight ball on one line before. Oof, how was that? It was, uh, it was me and one other dude and somebody just gave us an eight ball. And we already had a shitload of other drugs. They're so like, I don't want to carry this around all day. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just kidding. I was like, I don't want to carry this around all day. He goes, all right. And he just dumped it out and cut it into two lines. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, I was 22 or something at the time. So who cares? Yeah, you can do that shit at 22. Yeah. 21, maybe? I don't remember. Definitely can't do it now. Um, mm, eh, I wouldn't want to, really. It's like some Len Bias shit, you know? Yeah, but he was 21 when he died. Oh, was he really? Lynn Bias? How much did he do? How much coke did he do? <clears throat> Let me see. Yeah, you look that up. Uh, Barnsey, the number two singer on this list was Ray Charles. You agree with that? Yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal Ray Charles. Just, just tossing me softballs, really. I know. Uh, and uh, here's, where, here's the first curve here, at number three. Elvis Presley. Yeah, I mean, dude had a great voice and phenomenal charisma, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't write any of his own songs. So it puts me off him a bit. Yeah, but uh, does it d diminish from his vocal prowess and how he made people literally go crazy um, and go into hysterics at his shows? I mean, it was the '50s, so you didn't see uh, so much sexuality as you do now. You could give someone an orgasm just with a swivel, swivel of your hips. Yeah, but uh, you know, he still did a good job. Yeah, he was great. He was great. Uh, number four on this list is Sam Cooke. You into Sam Cooke? Sam Cooks, is he the dude that did that hypersonic missiles? Uh, CD? No, uh, de definitely a different Sam Cook. This is a uh, older African American rhythm and blues jazz uh, singer. Sam Cook. I feel like I'm gonna get destroyed for not remembering who Sam Cook is. Um, um, pass. Chain gang. Chain gang. Yeah, just a man working on a chain gang. So it's old oh, school. No. I'll give you a pass on that one, guys. He he only lived like, 30 years, so... Yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like... Uh, don't, don't tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like I'm not on this list. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gotten through the top 100 yet, but I, you might not be. John Lennon is number five. He's from England. Why is Lennon five, though? He's no, because a great he, songwriter. He was, so, he was so brave to take a nap 
to protest the Vietnam War, man. <laughs> <laughs> Buck naked. That's the on a dumbest bed. shit. That's the dumbest protest I've ever seen. It's it's the dumbest, but it's also the most brilliant. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, but you're talking about it, ain't you? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm talking about it because it's John Lennon. He could have taken a shit in the street and we would have talked about it. Still, I would be. Still to this day, uh, people talk about Just to about have a part of him shit. inside my body. And I don't, yeah, that's true. And I don't want to rip would, off. Would you literally, though, would you literally, if you could go back in time and it, like your only option was to eat a piece of John Lennon's actual shit, but everyone would know that you did it, um, would well, you? No. Not for Lennon. Um, no. No, I, maybe somebody else. It would have to be like uh, Kobe or Jordan, maybe. But uh, <laughs> like for me personally, you know, like obviously for you, yes, Lennon would eating his shit would be meaningful. You're, you're, what's the? This is just for the story you're talking about. Yeah, just for the story, kind of like snort, it would be. A, it would be a tale. Your bones. Like having sex with the queen, you know, like you wouldn't enjoy it, but you'd do it for oh, the tail. I would enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, but there's would, a there's likes a, older women, so yeah, he'd enjoy. There's it. a mile between the yard. fucking an old lady and eating someone's shit off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a pretty big divide there between those two. Well, uh, you know, speak for yourself. Some people find uh, fecal fecal fetish to be quite uh, quite the pastime. Well, you're not far from Germany. No, no, yeah. Germany is the that's that's the inventor of scat porn. Yeah, they love that stuff. And over you're there. you're also super close. You're right across the water from Belgium too. You could probably take a fucking ferry over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for a fecal porn uh, tour, I am right in the uh, in the breadbasket. Is it weird that I'm jealous that you could be shit on at any moment sexually before us, probably? I don't think it's very big of you to admit you're jealous. I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of crackheads around here. Ah, that, that, that is true. <laughs> I mean, you, you can imagine what you could get a crackhead to do if you had crack and they didn't. That, so I saw, I saw a meth head um, maybe three days ago mm -hmm. right at the, the stop sign here. Uh, two streets up at the stoplight, I should yep. say. And she's wearing baggy jeans. She was knocking on windows, asking for money, and then finally she <laughs> like just houses pulled down her jeans, and just grabbed her pussy and said, "It's pussy. You want it?" And I was like, "My God, that's, <laughs> see that, like, that, that is just, a genius marketing yeah, slogan. It is. How did you come up with it's this? pussy? You want it?" And I was like, "Man, direct <laughs> to the points. Get her over what to porn hub. What an enterprising young lady you get, are. Get Straight her to over. The point. Get her over it's to Pornhub. It's a relatable hubs. slogan. It get is. Her, get her over to Pornhub's marketing team now. I know. Uh, I see. That's the problem, though. It's that's how much power that particular drug or addiction in general can have." For someone and that's why i don't think the government should be in charge of anything that i need yeah because yeah, i don't yeah. want people like if i need something what am i willing to give up to the government to get that shit that i need you know what i mean <laughs> no way so the the to, to your point about the powerful drug her boyfriend was with her and like he, did he grab his dick and balls this is dick and balls he, he won't it <laughs> he turned around like he whispered something in her ear and then turned around immediately afterwards so i don't know if that line came from him or her but either way, he was down with it, whatever that pussy involved. And I'm assuming some form of cash. Um, but when you're methed out like that, there is no one who is saying, oh, yeah. You know what I'd really want right now is a, a girl who's 86 pounds, missing all her teeth, with tattoos that are clearly just uh, scribble-ons by somebody else. The missing teeth part could be used to your advantage i'm <laughs> just saying <laughs> i'm <laughs> i'm a free thinker ross <laughs> yeah <laughs> what about you have you had any meth meth up women come to your show and just fucking hit on you are you talking about a gum job yeah i've been i've been hit on by many uh, a, a menagerie of different folk um but none have i enjoyed so much as the meth heads mm. i remember when um when I was uh, unsigned, I lost my first record deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking on Craigslist for some from fast cash. I didn't want to get a nine to five because I wanted to be able to jump in the studio at a moment's mm -hmm. notice. Sure. And uh, there was a, uh, a man who was looking for an improvisational actor for, and I quote, business games. Oh, there he is. So uh, I would meet him in central <laughs> London, just by the London Eye. Um, and we would play a game in sort of a, a disused office room called Servant and Master. This is a true story. And he was a morbidly obese gentleman in sort of a shirt and tie. And he would sit in a chair and in a lordly Dickensian fashion request imaginary items. And I, as sort of like an Oliver Twist character, would <laughs> <laughs> have to crawl on my hands and knees. <laughs> and he'd say, Servant! 
bring me my slippers. And I'd have to go, oh, yes, sir. Here you are. Here are your slippers. Uh, are you $50. fucking kidding me? I am completely sick. $50 is $50. Yeah. Um, and I would, mm. I would crawl on my head. We did this every week for three months. Um, and <laughs> oh the blowjobs were not terrible. <laughs> From him or yeah, from him or to him. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's another tale for another time. Yeah. God, God bless those women who uh, have given blowjobs over the years to people yes. who really didn't deserve them. Yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. People that weren't you know like you had to dig in there to find the dick or you know maybe it didn't smell the best. But but that is that, that is something in the, in the gay community. I will say this: like every time a dude is is like like a gay guy has hit on me, he's wanted to suck my dick. And I don't know what the fascination was is with that. Really? Yeah. No, I've been asked to suck a dick before. Oh, you have? I have. Yeah. No, I've been asked casually. Very. It was. It was recently, just before lockdown. We were at a party, and we we're you know at my apartment, and the guy was like, "All right, buddy, it was really nice to see you. You know, have a have a great night." And then he just pulled his pants down and was like, "There's my dick. Like, do you want to suck it?" And, and you know what? It, I. I didn't want to suck it, but God damn it, did I respect him for his candor? So I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have to yeah. at that point, right? It's yeah. like I'm not enjoying it, but God damn it, I respect you. And then you filed a lawsuit <laughs> afterwards, saying that you were, you know, forced into the whole. Yeah, situation. you were forced into the whole. That's thing a win-win because was... not only do you get some money on the back end, but you also get to suck that guy's dick. Yeah, so. <laughs> and that's something you want to do. Of course, I didn't want to, officer. I'm Bonds Courtney, heterosexual <laughs> rock and roll star. That sounds like the same excuse that uh, Eddie Murphy gave when he was banging that tranny. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know, man. What do you? You mean that big fucking hog right there wasn't <laughs> you didn't see the dick in the front Jesus or... Christ. not that i'm shaming look at eddie murphy if you're out there and you're still sucking on hogs hey we're not shaming do you. your thing I, brother i i believe in you yeah we all thing do is, if i was remotely remotely into cock you know i would have like eight of them around me at a time like yeah. i'd have if i was even a little bit able to skip rope with the gender line i'd be surrounded by a feast of genitalia at all times a feast <laughs> Yeah, a feast of genitalia. Yeah, that's uh, that should be the name or the title of your new album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, management wasn't crazy about it, but I'll I'll resubmit. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Feast of genitalia by Barnes Courtney, and it's your face. It's a metaphor, you charlatans. It's 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 your face with balls all over it. Oh, it's my just God. me at an enormous dining table, resplendent in velvet. <laughs> Deaton robes <laughs> covered in the ball sacks of a hundred strangers. I got a fucking email from uh, one of those companies that makes the Theragun, like the massage gun things. Yes. And they want to send us some. And, oh, great. But no, because they want to do like an affiliate. Like, we'll pay you for every one. You'll give you like X amount. No, nah, I'm good on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it just made me think, I wonder how many people are misusing these things. Everyone. Because the the back massager was legit a back massager at one point. Yeah, and, and then, then became, women immediately figured out. Hey, I can rub can, my my clit with this. Yeah, yeah, you can blast yourself out with it. So I know somebody's using the stair gun and in an inappropriate. When I say yes. inappropriate, I mean inappropriate to what the manufacturer wanted to do. I don't think it's. More, I mean, that's morally how any in, and any innovation that humanity <clears throat> has uh, brought into the world has only come to fruition through that means. You know, it's like when the internet came out first of all and you know it was like some nerdy thing and everyone was like you know ignoring and then one guy was wait 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 a minute can you fuck it yeah (laughs) yeah. i I guess you could put pictures of naked wait wait so you can fuck it you can fuck it you didn't say you could fuck it and then suddenly yeah if if you if you you think back though to everything in time it's it's either to fuck something or to fuck in it um look man fire why, why do we create fire? So it's warm so you can continue fucking. Because when it's, when it's freezing, you can't continue fucking. A car. It's not really to get you to places. It's to get you to get pussy. Or you can also fuck in it. Or to impress women so they will fuck you. So they will fuck you, yeah. yeah. But that's all of, all of uh, civilization is all about dudes trying to impress women. I mean, look. Before any civilization existed and we were just like 12 people fucking hunting and gathering in a group. The dudes were still trying to hunt and gather better than the other dudes, so they would win the best pussy in the group. Yeah, like it's all been about that, folks. And if you don't believe that, then you're fucking you're you're missing the whole point of this. You really are. Are you dating anybody? I mean, I hate I hate music. You know, I just do it for the women and the drugs. Yeah, (laughs) I don't even like songs. (laughs) Are you dating anybody now? Are you are you single? 
me who who am i to date in this in this lockdown scenario well i didn't know if you entered pre-lockdown with somebody and you were like oh hey shit i'm going to my parents house you want to come and they were like no i don't want to live with your parents barnes i've created a beautiful covid wife for myself out of a series of pillows and drain cleaners and various <laughs> different other household <laughs> objects <laughs> tied together and meticulously hung from a door frame in the basement. I feel like you could probably just buy a sex doll, man. They're like, yes, they're pretty doll. cheap. You don't have to go to fucking Walmart to build one. I am a creative, okay? I don't just buy a sex doll. Oh, yeah, but you go I, through the whole pro. We've done it. You go through the whole process. We you get bought to pick, one from uh, Japan. Like the eye color, you get two different sets of eyeballs, actually. You get different wigs, yep. different heights, like the fingernails, hats. the whole stitch. They yeah. come with like little rubber hats, too. Yeah. Um, but what, what happens to all of your, you know, your man juices when you expel them? Into the sex doll. I'm glad you asked. So it's it's uh, it's kind of like a uh, deposit box, like a safety deposit yeah. box at a bank. So you pull it out. Um, by the way, there's also a USB that you could hook into the pussy to warm it up before you fuck it. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, that's you, nice. You pull that it's out nice and you like put it in the dishwasher pussy. and they give you an extra one. So that way, when the other one's washing, if you want to refuck it, you have a you have a second one. That's that's yeah. I mean, the average serious. dishwasher takes about forty five minutes to complete a cycle, and I don't have. I can't wait that long. No, I'm dumping loads every half hour. Yeah, <laughs> easily. <laughs> you, you can't just casually put your load in the dishwasher. Like that's not. I mean, it, it sounds fine when you say. I like know. That, I know you're in fucking England right now, but this is America. Yeah, you can. I can do whatever the put fuck I want here in the dishwasher. <laughs> here, this is man. the land of the free. <laughs> <laughs> when we signed that document, we did not do so to be told where to dump our loads by the likes of some transatlantic, possibly homosexual, skimp and lily white fairy from England. <laughs> That's actually probably exactly what was said. Yeah. I bet you Ben yeah. Franklin said that before he signed the goddamn Well, he, thing. he was a big fan of French pussy, though, so I don't know if he would have said something like that. Yeah, you never know. He was banging like some duchess in the French court while he was the ambassador there. He was fucking everybody, wasn't he? He was a poon Benjamin hound. Benjamin yeah. Franklin? Yeah, it was a poon hound. Yeah, big time poon hound. <laughs> Huge poon hound. Uh, he wasn't I, the sauciest looking guy. No. No, but he was, the, he was the smartest human being on earth at the time. So that's probably. He was incredibly, it was incredibly intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also one of those things, he had money too. And I think back then you were, like if you were fat, that meant you were wealthy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think his whole look was tailored to get pussy. Now the bozo <laughs> ring he had for a haircut. There's nothing you can do about that. No one that. cared about that back then, though. No, they didn't. They didn't no. give a shit. Yeah, because I suppose he wasn't riddled with syphilis. Presumably, he didn't have smallpox. You know, no. he had money. He could afford to eat. These were all positive things back then. Yeah, yeah. The, he did go through some sexually <laughs> transmitted diseases. My he, wife's watching a documentary mm -hmm. on him right now, and uh, and he had a bag of bones in the fucking basement of twelve bodies. Apparently, he was studying, like, biology, mm -hmm. and that was the only way to do it was to actually cut the fucking people open yourself. Yeah, but you can do that now. Like, if you're a, if you're a registered... What, why are you laughing, Alec? Alec. Fuck off. If Our, you're a scientist, like, when people die, you can buy cadavers from the morgue. Yeah. If it's, like, an unclaimed body or there's no burial plan or the family donates the body, you can buy it. Like, universities do this all the time. They buy bodies from the morgue. So I guess back then, they didn't have that. So no. they said that it was, like, uh, they were robbing <laughs> graves and shit like that. So, well, you do what you got to do. Yeah. To cut open a body, you, you definitely do what I you got to do. I mean, if I need a body, I'm going to either find one or make one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and what would you rather me do? Dig your fucking dead son up or kill your other son? Yeah. I feel like this choice is easy. It is easy. God damn it, man. It is easy. By the way, my wife says hello, Barnes. She's a, a gigantic fan. She was like, can I just be on the show today? And I was like, no. easy. Easy, Jesse. No. Like, you've seen him once in person. You're good to go. Yeah, we're not doing like, that. We're not... We're not bringing you around <laughs> Barnes over and over and over again, you know? Yeah, you know, like, because I, I have so many fans. I feel uncomfortable when people tell me nice things, you know? <laughs> if, if anything, call me a piece of shit. Uh, that, that's what I'm more accustomed to from my upbringing. Uh, so I'll feel, I'll probably write more music the angrier you are. Yeah, well, hey, what, what does your family think of all this, by the way? Since we met them at the top of the show, are they proud of you? Are they amped about all of this? Or do they even know because you're you're in America so much touring? Yeah, I think they're just sort of confused and uh, like I'd pleasantly surprised that I'm doing something constructive. Uh, you know, now that I've come out from the coal shed where I spent my youth, 
Uh, I don't awesome. know. My, my family, my, my mom was a, a big supporter. My parents in England uh, sort of wanted to know what I was going to do with my life. Um, you know, but surprise, surprise, I did it. So joke's on you, Dad. Yeah, right? Don't, don't harbor any bitterness towards him or anything. I mean, I did put a sack full of my pubes in their pillowcases last night, but mm. it was more out of love. Of course. I do that for dominance. Yeah. Like, I, I sprinkle my pubes in, uh, in people's food all the time. Just oh, I, dude. I, I want to be inside them. Yeah, uh, Jamie's saying go back to the light. There you go. Boom. It got dark in here. Yeah, uh, there you go. But no, I mean, yeah, talk to, talk to, I'm like the pubic Peter Pan. You know, I sprinkle that shit like fairy dust. You ever given go. someone a gorilla mask? No, but uh, that's that's on my list. Yeah, you know what that is? <laughs> no, I don't. So a gorilla mask is where you shave off all your pubes and then wait for your buddy to pass out and you glue them to his face. Oh, man. But you use like airplane glue, so it doesn't. it's going to be on there for a while. Yeah, yeah, or Gorilla Glue, you know? No, uh, I don't know how it bonds to skin. I've never tried that. <laughs> but we can, what, Gorilla uh, Glue? Yeah, Gorilla Glue. I mean, it bonds to everything else. I've, I've glued a piece of metal to a piece of wood with Gorilla Glue, which is, should be impossible. And it yeah. Works, so. huh. I don't know. We'll try pubes on your face. Yeah, look, I, I'll it's never only black way, out again. It's but. the only way you're ever going to be able to grow a beard. That's true. I can't grow a beard. Can you grow a beard, Barnes? I literally just tried over the last two weeks. It sort of it grew into sort of a Hulk Hogan kind of thing which mm. wasn't it wasn't the the best look that i've ever sported yeah but i imagine there's a small <laughs> you know part of society that would find that incredibly attractive well like yeah the people, poor people. people who like uh tiger king would like that because that's his exact facial hair configuration he has correct correct i can't grow a beard by the way so i'm my i can grow a very powerful mustache and uh one of those flavor savers Bet one of the oh, best yeah. in the business that the rest of this is patchy. I can't grow it in on the side. There's ways well, to like deal with that now, smoke. by the way. How do you do with how do you deal with that? Um there's like a bunch of different ways. There's like follicle counseling and all kinds of shit. But yeah, mostly it's counseling to get the gay out of you. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's gonna be a, a lot of hours on that couch. You gotta go pray the gay away and then the beard comes. You have to. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, I, I've been shocked by the the amount of celebrities who are growing <laughs> beards where you're just like, hey man. Just because you're inside the house doesn't mean that you can't shave, especially if you're going to be on Instagram Live every day. Um, like Diddy. Diddy's got a white Santa Claus beard right now. Puff Daddy. That's kind of cool. <laughs> eh, it was shocking to see. Where You're used to seeing Puff Daddy look identical for the last 50 years of his life, and then all of a sudden he looks like somebody's great-grandfather. I like that. You could shave half of it off, you know? You could go from successful musician to uh, great-grandfather with the turn of a head. <laughs> on the Instagram Live. Have you been going live a lot? I feel like every single person's been going live on Instagram every day. Oh, you know, I want to live my life. I, I feel manacled by this constant need to engage with people on social media at all times. I, I miss the days of the 70s where Led Zeppelin didn't do an interview for a year and people thought that was the best shit ever. And you could be dark and mysterious, you know? And you could purport yourself as a deity or a god and people might believe you. And now, like, they can see me at every hour of every day and they understand that I'm a flawed human being and it annoys me. Yeah, I, I agree with it because, you know, most of these guys that I see, especially the, the, the big celebrities, um, they've shown their ass during this whole quarantine where it's like if, the, if you don't have the proper lighting, writing, makeup, all that other shit, they're not that great and they're not that entertaining. Um, but they still crave that need for attention. Therefore, they're going live every 10 seconds. Um, Musician-wise, I've found new musicians that I've liked just because they were simply <laughs> talented enough to pick up a, a, a guitar and play acoustic without you know, auto-tune or any of that other shit. Um, but then I look at guys like Tory Lanez, where Tory Lanez to me was a very mediocre rapper slash R&B singer. His quarantine radio thing that he's been doing every night, now he's over, shit, man, 10 million Instagram followers. And everybody's waiting for this live show every night. It's been shocking. I didn't know if your what? reps had said something to you. Yeah. Have they? Have your label reached out to you and said, hey, man, start going live, start engaging people during this and keep your fan base going? My label are in a constant state of extreme disappointment at my lack of engagement on social media. Really? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> I like to put like something together, think about it, and think about, like, you know, is this entertaining? Is this good? And then if the answer is yes, I put it out. It annoys me that I'm expected to sort of like just constantly put out quantity over quality. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. The, the, the guy who does your videos for your Instagram, I was a huge fan of, Dan and I. So we hired him actually to do the Drink and Bro ads mm -hmm. 
um, opener. <clears throat> and he came out to Vegas, shot it, edited it, and uh, knocked it out of the park. So I, I forget his name. Fuck, man. I'm going to get killed. Oh, Luke. Luke Hobden. Luke, yes. <laughs> uh, the best. God damn it did he crush that, man. Um, and he's, he's awesome. Uh, he's, he's amazing. It was really nice to have somebody uh, out on tour that, like, actually understood, uh, like, how to put personality across. Because most people come on the tour bus and they do, like, a video of, like, concert highlights, which nobody wants to see because concert videos suck unless you're there. Right. Uh, so he'd, like, find a song that I was singing with the band about magical times with friends and the taste of love's first kiss and the, the taste of salt on an ocean wave and like mix that into the video like he's, he was really good yeah he's he's super talented so we hired him to do the the drinking broettes opener uh for the new show and uh he had nothing but unbelievably nice things to say about you he was like look man that kid's the real fucking deal like he shot a lot of shit and he's like that that should be the next huge rock star in the world um, yeah, well, you know, I sent him uh, an envelope um, with his grandmother's toe in it, and I just mm -hmm. said, "Look, if you ever want to see your grandma again, then uh, you, you better say some really nice things about me." <laughs> and uh, it's, it's worked really well. What if he had sent you back uh, the rest of his grandmother's foot? <laughs> <laughs> your move, but <laughs> game Joke, on. Jokes on you, friend. That'll give two fucks about grandma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she still owes me like ten bucks in birthday money. <laughs> <laughs> that really backfired. <laughs> Gotta find more grandmas. The next box comes, it's both her arms in it, and you're like... Then, then you feel like you have to do something? Yeah, in a, in a, in a can of soup that like, she can now no longer drink. This old lady's gonna die if I don't give him $50,000. I was just trying to get a fucking music video. Man. <laughs> I gotta say, Luke, you really turned that around. That was, that was some impressive blackmail shit. <laughs> The girl who was uh, at Chelsea, who was for the photographer for that shoot, by the way, fell in love Chelsea. with Luke. Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah. She fell in love with Luke, by the way. <laughs> it's a terrible tragedy because Luke is possibly one of the sauciest men uh, that I have ever had on my team. And yet we, we call him the battleship because he sinks so many conversations. You'll see beautiful, you know, strange, mysterious, yep. godly women coming up to him because he's he's such a sight to behold but he's just he's just so weird and i love it you know because i'm not trying to fuck him so i don't need him to be this kind of like really <laughs> super like sexy manly i mean you know it's it's nice i appreciate it sure um but he's what he said to me the other day he was like uh yeah uh bonds might you know i'll, I'll wear these shorts with extra large pockets and, and i'll just fill them full of sunflower seeds and I was like, right. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Because <laughs> like, then when I, I go on my Tinder dates, I'll just be eating seeds and she'll say, where did you get those? And I'll show her my pockets and they'll be full. <laughs> That's a real Napoleon Dynamite move, isn't it? It is. But I, you're right. I, when I, the very first conversation I had with him when we were going to hire him for this, he goes, man, um, I've seen one of your movies. And he's like, I'm a big fan. And, uh, and he goes, I'm, I'm trying to be a filmmaker myself. And I was like... <laughs> great uh what, what are you hoping to do and he goes well i don't like to tell people because it's super fucking weird and uh you're, you're probably gonna judge me and you know I, I still want to do this gig and i was like look no matter what you say you you have the job and it's totally fine we're, we're gonna hire you you can say the weirdest shit you want and he goes my my dream is to shoot the first uh 3d movie on the moon yeah that's true he said that to me a few uh like six months ago. And I feel I like, like that's the kind of thing where you call the police. If someone says that to you, yeah. you're like, no, you just wait one minute. I've got to call my mom. I'll be right back. And then you call the cops and have that motherfucker <laughs> wheeled out of there because that's an insane dream. The Well, so here's the thing. You know me. I indulged it and I go, great. Tell me how you would do that because from a production standpoint, that budget's going to be really high to get to the goddamn moon. And he had it all thought out. He goes, look. I figure in the next 20 to 30 years, we'll be able to send people to space pretty cheaply, right? So I'll be able to get an investor to send me there or whatever. And he goes, and also 3D printers, like we'll, we'll all be printing our equipment out through these 3D printers by that point, cameras included. And he goes, I think I'd have a really good shot at it. And at the end of the conversation, he goes, do you promise not to tell anyone because I'm worried about <laughs> someone stealing this idea? Well, you and just I told go, half a million people. So. I did, I did, yeah. We have 9 million listeners and I was like, I go, hey, man, even if I told everyone this idea, 
no one's going to be able to do this. And I'm like, I don't even know if 20 to 30 years is going to be long enough for you to do it. Without fame, his personality around women is uh, just sadly not very effective. But I think as a famous person, he would come across as like, oh, my God, wow, he's so like unapologetically, unashamedly himself. What an eccentric character, you know? Yeah. This exotic man who's like done the first 3D video on the moon. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, Ec- eccentricity is directly linked to wealth. Yes. Or at least the acceptability of it. Like if you're uh, an ex- eccentric poor person, people just think you're an asshole. Oh, yeah. Why do you think, why do you think <laughs> you know people I mean? put up with Johnny Depp's bullshit? Where it's just yeah. like, hey, man, <clears throat> you know, you, you can't have, because uh, like, what do you, no, it was Nick Cage who bought the Elephant Man's bones. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's like, man, yep. if you weren't Nick Cage, you can't, like a normal person can't get away with that. No. I mean, I didn't even know that they were on sale, to be honest. So, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can buy that shit. He bought them from Michael Jackson. So Michael Jackson had owned them previously, had gotten into some financial trouble. And then he, he owned that, and then he bought, uh, <laughs> he bought. Imagine Michael Jackson, like, sat in his mansion, like, oh, no. Yeah. I'm gonna need to sell some of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for it was that like, like somebody asked Michael Jackson why he bought the elephant man's bones and he was just like, um, because he was an outcast like me and I feel it, you know, um nobody really knows what he went through except for me. And it was just like, Oh my god, dude. <laughs> You can only get away with this shit because you're Michael he Jackson. He was an outcast like me, so I wanted to own his bones. <laughs> yeah. How was Michael Jackson an outcast? He is the, one of the most famous, beloved, richest people in the world until he started fucking children. Right. He, fucking he, children and getting caught doesn't make you an outcast. That makes you a pedophile. He claimed You that, fuck a that, few kids and suddenly everyone thinks you're an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a limit on that number, MJ. Um, no, but he claimed that uh, nobody knew what it was like to be a genius and be that famous so that he was stuck behind doors every second of the day, couldn't go out in public, blah, blah, blah. And then he used to call other people that were going to be famous or right on the cusp of fame and then offer his advice to them. And one of them was Kobe Bryant. And so they did this huge expose on it after he died. Wow. Is that why Kobe got in that trouble in Denver that time? No, but I, I, ironically. Like, hey, Kobe, you got to rape at least one guy, man. Come on. In the, in the interview, because they said, they said uh, what, what stopped the friendship going with Michael Jackson? And he goes, he was going through the rape thing. And that's the exact same time that Michael Jackson was going through the, the first kitty toucher trial. Um, you know, the one where he danced on the limo after they, he got yeah. the not guilty verdict. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was before. That was on the way in. Oh, it was. That. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah so he I was... went to see a buddy of mine play a show at the O2 uh, Dome in London. And uh, Michael Jackson, before he died, part of his contract said that if he was going to play there, they needed to make a purpose built dressing room just for him. So I was talking to one of the staff and they said, Do you want to see the Michael Jackson dressing room? You know, he never actually got to use it. And I go in and it was this table and chairs in a very small pokey room with like a china cabinet at the back. And she walks up to the china cabinet and like pulls this like plate or something or whatever. And the whole thing swings open, right, to reveal this secret dressing room in it. Really cool. Um, But the really freaky thing was that at the back of that dressing room was behind a totally like concealed wall. Yeah. There was a child size door that led to like a tiny tiny further secret room with nothing in it but two bean bags and guitar hero so and on the other side of that was another door that led inside the mind of john malkovich <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> This is way too crazy. I'm just going to go back to the show. <laughs> exactly. Uh, by, by the way, so th- what you just described <clears throat> was what those kids in the doc describes at his house in Neverland Ranch. So they said that you would go up to a room. Behind that would be a secret door. And then behind that was a little door that would go up. And there was a separate bed in there with a TV and, and uh, video games and shit. So, like, maybe that was his kitty touching room. Yeah, I mean, I did, you, you want a room for it, don't you? Did anybody, gonna... did anybody ever make a Michael Jackson MTV Cribs spoof? No. This is where I touch kids. <laughs> 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 like he goes into a bedroom. It would be just like if you play, if you played it completely straight. Yeah. It would just be super awkward. You walk into the room and there's nothing but like bunk beds and 
toys and stuff. He goes, this is where the magic happens. Because that's what they always say about the bedroom. Like, oh, Michael. No, brother. Hey, cut. Cut that. <laughs> like, you wouldn't be able to. Probably wouldn't be able we to put that out. We talked about this, okay? <laughs> we, literally, we literally just said. Can you imagine being his publicist? You're just like, every day, oh. you're, it's, your head's buried in your hands. Like, God fucking damn it. Good luck with that. Uh, they did say the monkey was out of control, though. <laughs> and they were like, that Bubbles, the monkey, wasn't friendly at all. And uh, they had to keep mo- like the, the monkey in a cage because it was trying to tear people's faces off and shit. What? Bubbles? Yeah. Michael Jackson's pet monkey? No. That, that well-adjusted man, the pet that he kept, was, you wasn't, can, very, wasn't very sane. You can imagine him like doling out the medication at night. He's like, all right, two for me, one for Bubbles. Mm-hmm. He's like, that, that fucking monkey's on Xanax and shit all the time. Oh, yeah, like, dude. Just relax, monkey. And don't they live for like 60 years or something it crazy? It depends on the type of primates, but they can live a long time, yeah. The monkeys can live a long time? I don't know. When are you going to get to the stage where you're buying <laughs> weird shit, Barnes? Um, I think when I've finally gotten over my very expensive drugs and alcohol problem and yeah. have money available to pay for things. There it is. There it is. What are you going to get that's weird? What, what's, your, what's your bubbles in your life right now? What do you want? You want a monkey? Um... I don't know. I feel like it's been done a monkey, you know, like if I were going to get an exotic pet, I'd probably have to get something like really flashy, you know, yeah. like one of those, one of those endangered antelope with like the sort of like flaccid penis for a nose. Yeah, yeah. One of those, imagine oh, one yeah. of those snuffling around the coffee table or one of those blobfish, you know, um, ooh, I, or ooh, the, the most dangerous animal of all a manatee, a man. Mm. That's called slavery, <laughs> and we've outlawed it. Apparently, yeah, we've we've abolished that. Although NASCAR didn't get that memo, no, they didn't. Uh, uh, 1865, that happened over here, Barnsy. Yep, uh, he could leave any time he wants. He wouldn't be. A, he wouldn't have to do anything. He would be my pet to love and to hold. Well, yeah, that, I wouldn't expect anything of him. Yeah, that's a that's a gay relationship. It's just a gay for. relationship. Yeah. Is all you're in. It's that's fine. Like, that's all you're in at that just, point. Just How be... about you guys stop shitting all over my ideas and actually start coming with some original things yourself? <laughs> well, I mean, don't be look. jealous just well, because I'm the first person to think of having a pet. <laughs> Dan, a pet, the, a pet man. There's a there's a show some of our friends are on called Seal Team. It's about Navy SEALs. It's uh, here in the U.S. on CBS and uh, the director has a rescue mini donkey that he just walks around set with all day. You're kidding. No. The director of the show has a fucking mini donkey. Yes. Does anybody say anything to him about this? No, they like, love hey, it. Man. Because there's like working military working dogs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Justin Melnick has one, and there's one other dog that's on set every day. So it's normal. No it's shit. It's normal for animals to be around when they're outside. What's your purchase, Dan? Like, what are you uh, going? Exotic are you going, shit? Yeah, are you going animals? Are you going cars, paintings? Like, what, what is it for you? Um, no, I would just use the money to troll the fuck out of everybody all the time. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I saw something that was weird and I thought buying it would make people uncomfortable, then yeah, I would absolutely do it. Okay. Like if somebody's life rights came up and people know who I am and the fucked up sense of humor I have. Yeah. If you bought the life rights to someone that's Terry like, Shiva. Yes. <laughs> Terry Shiva was a good example. Like, what are you going to do with this? Like, uh, you'll see. Dude, I feel like that would, be, movie. that would be my thing. I would buy life rights of tragic people and just make a mockery of their entire lives. All right. Or, I, I you know, or maybe every now and again do like a super serious one because yeah. pe- people are waiting for the joke and it never happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that too. Just I would use it to fuck with people psychologically. Okay. But butt boys is kind of like that, by the way. You're waiting yeah. for the joke to happen, and it doesn't. It's Chimps. just a serious thing. Bubbles, by the way, was a chimpanzee, and they live about 30 years. Oh, all right. Well, oh, maybe he was towards the end of his life. Yeah, I could deal with a psychotic chimpanzee for 30 years. For 30 years. Yeah, you're, you're a young hey. guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a young man, you know? Yeah. I got the chutzpah. I got the spunk to take on a chimp. I feel like a shark would be cool. Like if you just had a wading pool, you fill it up with seawater, mm-hmm. and you just drag it uh, on a wagon or something. Like what oh, sharks you, need it, it would die immediately. They need to swim through water constantly. They don't have movable gills. That's they true. So you have to you have to make it the the wading pool big enough then for them to swim in circles all day. You'd have yeah. to have a guy that's sort of constantly blowing seawater into the shark's or, gills. It's a dangerous job, but it pays well. Yeah, we could take some of these respirators these COVID patients are using. Yeah, just retrofit pop, pop it because you're gonna have a lot of extra after this pandemic's over a lot of extra sharks? respirators mm. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so you, you can you can pump them full of it <clears throat> it's think... called recycling maybe you've heard of it no. yeah exactly recycling <laughs> makes america look poor That's it what does recycling makes america look poor we hate it here yeah uh, we hate recycling here 
I think I would buy some of those old letters. So like, I don't know if it's because of the times that we're in and people are looking for cash and the market's crashing and all that shit. But there's been a, like a lot of personal items up for sale, like letters. Uh, somebody like sold Madonna's panties, used panties, mm. like 18 or 19 years old with like a love note that she wrote to this guy who she was in love with and she was like 19 years old or something like that. Um, like weird shit like that. There was a thing on the auction block the other day from Tupac who had written uh, somebody a letter from jail, like back and was describing his jail conditions. I want weird shit like that. Yeah, just, that's pretty cool. Like, like real shit where I'm like, oh, fuck, that was weird. I saw a collection of Russell Brand's pubes in a museum once. Really? That's yeah, not, seriously. not yeah, shocking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, and they were they were ample. I mean, you know, there was there was enough for the whole class. Are you guys growing yours out during the quarantine? Uh, yeah, because oh, I'm staying manscaped. Uh, yeah, personally. we got we get one of no. our sponsors is Manscaped, which is a it's why? a it's a package that you can shave it up. I'll tell you why. If you're one of those people who do regularly trim your nuts, you got to get manscaped. It is the the first time I've ever gone through a whole process without nicking myself. Yep, my friends, you are missing out. This is like a little cloud I got going on here, cushioning every thrust. You know? Yeah, but you're you're you don't have a woman inside the house. Like you're a single like, barn. I'm like the sort matter. of salt sprinkle guy of the pube world. You know, <laughs> salt I add style. I bring style to the equation and flair. You know, so I'm you're, a creative man. So you're bush bay then. I'm all about that bush. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can sit, but you you have no lady there. It's just you, right? Yeah. Have it's, you, it's just it's just me. Thank you for reminding me. Of course. Have you fucked it all during the quarantine? Like. How does that work? Oh, yeah. Are or? those your like? Are they step brothers or are they like? How does that work? Yeah, I mean it's it's not as bad if they're step brothers because well, yeah, you know, le- it, legally it's, speaking, yeah, uh, obviously it's not yeah. fully it's not fully incest if they're step brothers. Well, it's not fully incest if they're step brothers or if they're members of the royal family, and you are as well. That's that's funny because it's true. Yes, it's literally <laughs> true. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> it's weird how that like kind of went out of style do you notice that you yeah. can't you can't fuck your cousins and sisters anymore it's crazy what do you mean incest is out of style <laughs> are you sure can you imagine the, the queen like there's some unopened mail on her dress she's like what the fuck is this and it's like dated 200 years ago Ooh. and she picks it up she's reading it and she goes oh fuck <laughs> we've been banging each other this whole time yeah because the queens live for god damn it what is she 300 years old now it feels like she's 94 i think were you watching that speech when she came on TV the other day that everybody was making a big deal about? And no, I completely missed that entirely. Um, well, let me ask you this about Boris Johnson. Since you're over in England, were people rooting for him to die? What, what's the sitch there? I mean, I can't speak for the entire nation, although I should. You, you, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Barnes Courtney, transatlantic <laughs> musician who makes songs about fire and glitter, should speak for the people of England. And you're right to put that in my hands, in my capable hands. Um <laughs> I'm, most of the people that I know were not rooting for Boris Johnson. I'll tell you why. Because despite the fact that numerous nations around the globe were going into full lockdown mm-hmm. after just a few uh, coronavirus cases, and Italy was in meltdown because of their inaction and actively contacting governments saying, don't make the same mistake as us, he decided to go for this herd immunity tactic, which is basically just a fancy way of saying, let's let some people die. And keep our economy running. Yeah. And uh, then we don't have to lose any money. And ironically, uh, after put, trying to put this into place and failing and ultimately, ultimately conceding to the doctors and having to put the nation in lockdown, he then contracted coronavirus. So I think a lot of people were uh, were excited about we're, that. We're amped about that. Yeah. I always yeah. wonder because our news cycle is way different than yours over there. And you never know, you know, where it's just like, all right, cool. Are the people rooting for him or not? And, and same with your mayor. Who's the guy? It's, it's a Muslim guy. Who's your mayor over there? Sadiq Khan. Yeah. People, do people like him or not over there? It's such a mixed bag. I think it's, you know, relatively similar to any political system around the world, you know, apart from North Korea, where they all claim to, to love their guy uh, eternally. Um, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag. You always have people for and against and certainly the younger generation seems perpetually at odds with the boomers. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, because I, I always wondered, like, what the actual thoughts are on him. Because over here, everybody's like, oh, London's got a Muslim mayor. They don't give a fuck about anything. Uh, and, but I didn't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's funny. I spend so much of my time in the States that I, like, know more about American politics than I do about the UK. But since I've been back, um, 
it never even comes into conversation, the, the creed of uh, the mayor of London, you know, like, yeah. it's just completely a non-issue. And I suppose in America, there's such a, an enormously negative connotations uh, surrounding that entire faith that it would be outrageous to see someone of that background in politics. Yeah, because we have one. Uh, okay, we got a couple. We got yeah. a couple. Uh, the one in Minnesota, and like she's always a fucking light, Ellen Omar lightning on. And yeah. then Rashida Tlaib. There's a there's a number of. She uh, married her mothers. brother, and allegedly, then, and then they got divorced, and uh, also allegedly, and then and got then remarried. She got remarried to a man she was having an affair with that ended his marriage that she lied about. That is true. Yes, like we yes. can prove that part. Yeah, uh, but that's like that's neither here nor that has nothing to do with her her religion. I think in America, people are used to someone having religion. And it's more, I don't know if offensive is the right word, but it's more jarring when someone's a different religion if you're religious than if you're irreligious and someone's religious of any kind. Right. Like, I wouldn't care if someone believed, like, I, I you know, my thoughts on religion and shit, but yeah. I wouldn't, that wouldn't be, that would never be a deciding factor for me in voting for someone. Yeah. Me neither to, <laughs> uh, to, to a point. Like, Hamity is... Muslim. If yeah. he was running for a person like him was running for something, that would be a non-factor. Yeah, I would have to know what their beliefs are, and you yeah, know. But that's anybody. Shit, right? they were fighting that, for that's, yeah, that's how you should vote for someone, not based on the fact that they look and think like you. Yeah, in my opinion. No, that's true. He's yeah. a cannibalistic baby eater, but god damn it, do I love his policies? <laughs> what he does? Is- <laughs> He's got the same <laughs> color eyes that I do. So, therefore, there you get lost. Yeah. In him. you get lost in him. Uh, Barnsey, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is uh, somebody who's helped you out, inspired you. You know the drill. You you gave it out last time. Is there somebody different uh, in particular, maybe after this last album came out? Somebody who inspired me after the last record? Um, I mean, I've been reading that guy, uh, what's his face, Harari's book, Sapiens. That was pretty incredible. It takes you right back from um, the dawn of the agricultural revolution into modern times mm-hmm. and uh, serves as kind of like a, a vehicle to explain the plight of humanity as we slowly trick ourselves into an ever more complicated web of um, <laughs> technology, supposedly to make our lives easier. It's quite interesting the parallels that he draws. Um, talks about how we attempted to make our lives better by cultivating the wheat plant but ultimately ended up becoming slaves to it, carrying heavy buckets of water around for 12 hours a day as opposed to four hours of hunting and gathering, right? Mm -hmm. And then takes that and compares it with the modern era of texting, talking about how we attempted to make letter writing easier for ourselves. So we invented, uh, you know, iPhones and texting, but now we receive thousands of texts a day and it demands our attention at all time. He calls it the luxury trap. It talks about how we're sort of ever turning the dial up on uh, on the proverbial treadmill in a vain attempt to uh, improve our our day to day lives, so I found that quite inspiring. I found that quite inspiring for uh, subject matter for writing, especially if you sort of contextualize that with uh, what's going on presently. This uh, COVID disaster and and climate change, you know, whether you believe in it or not. The world certainly does feel as though there's an apocalyptic mm. air hanging about. Well, climate and, change is happening. Uh, it's whether you believe in it or not. Yeah, it's real. This is a matter of what's causing it and what, like, to what degree, I suppose. And but, if yeah. you can stop it, um, yeah. you know, if one nation can stop it. Because, look, truthfully, it takes the world. Yeah. And I don't think you'll be able to, to police the entire world. No. I mean, but, this, is the, this is the point I was just about to make. If you consider uh, humanity from the perspective of Mr. Harari's luxury trap and how we've sort of been trying to improve our lives from the dawn of the agricultural revolution, but unwittingly making things more difficult. We've built so much momentum uh, up to this point that it would require an equal force the opposite way to dismantle the huge amount of complex systems that have led us to this, these dire straits, which we're in, if you follow me. You know, like we exist in a capitalist society um, that is based upon a system of self-fulfilling uh, recurring debt. Um, so we need to keep spending. We need to keep destroying the environment, burning fossil fuels. Otherwise, our economy falls apart. How do you t- 
turn that in on itself? How do you find an ulterior way forward? Uh, we've never had to think on a global scale as a global society before. For the first time in human history, we are a global empire. And as we know from uh, countless empires before us, all empires eventually come to an end and fall. And I wonder if we're entering into that era, which they call the Anthropocene, <clears throat> if that would be the last era yeah. of humankind. Well, I mean, there's been five what we would call world ending events mm -hmm. in the history of the earth so far. And we're due for another one some, sometime soon. Like recently we talked about uh, Yellowstone and if it erupted, right. the volcano, volcano erupted, yeah. it would cause nuclear winter, meaning there would be so much ash in the air that the sun would not be able to penetrate it over about 75 to 80% of the earth. That'd be it. Like all of America would be covered in ash. Mm -hmm. Like we, we would look up and see nothing but dark ash for years. And that'd be pretty much the end of it. I mean, look, it's coming one way or another. Right. That's why I live every day or live every week like it's Shark Week. Because you really uh, do. You don't know if you're going to have tomorrow. If you're waiting to do something in your life, I would stop waiting right now because we're fucked. Yeah. This is all coming yeah, and, to and a And kill very yourself abrupt end. on your own terms. Exactly. Uh, do reverse cowgirl tonight if your wife's not into it. Tell her the world's going to end tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Let her face the fucking wall. Now's the time to get that bucket list out there. Yeah, might as well pull it out. Yeah. Um, and have sex during the quarantine, for Christ's sakes. Barnsy, get out there. Put di Start dipping your dick in some fucking I shouldn't ink. have turned down that crackhead. No, you she shouldn't have. <laughs> she put it on a, put it on a plate. That's what them? I always say. People never, at the end of your life, when you're on your deathbed, very few people regret things they did. They often regret things they did not do. So if you're strolling around town tonight, like maybe you're just walking out to your car and you see a crackhead in the alley, maybe see what they're up to. Yeah, maybe let them get, get, a, get a suck on that. Yeah, you've got a nice, you most people out there have a nice little reserve of food and booze and whatnot. Like you're, you're prepared for this, so just invite them in, clean them up a little bit. <laughs> and then make them a nice dinner and then, you know, do some work. Well, that is a lot of people's fantasies. Uh, they have a wealth of experience that can only enhance any sexual acts. Not yeah. just the sexual acts, but being a survivor. Like, everybody should go out and adopt a homeless person right now and learn how to live for yeah. them, because that's where we're all going. Can you adopt a homeless person? Kidnap if... is the word that I wanted to use. Okay, okay. But I don't want to be found, found liable of any crime later on. So sure, sure. We'll call it adoption. I'll make some paperwork. Uh, I'll trick them into signing it, and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> to adopt <laughs> another adult, I've looked into it, by the way. All you had... You just have to have signatures from both parties. Is that it? Yeah, because I looked into adopting Jared. Okay. We is, that a, is that a real thing? Can you actually adopt another man? Yes. Yeah. Well, another human being of any gender, I believe. Yeah, any gender whatsoever. Yeah. Do you want to be adopted? <laughs> How's your home life right now? Yeah, I'll adopt I feel like you guys are just. I feel like you guys are just riffing on my initial idea of having a pet human, um, and that's okay. It's okay to be jealous. There's, a, there's a difference between a pet and then actually being a father figure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what we what we want to say is Dan and I want to be your fathers. Yeah, you guys would be my dads. Yeah, we'd yeah. be your dads. No fooling. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go downstairs after this interview ends in about ten seconds, tell tell your dad you're fired. I've got two new dads who are going to adopt me, mm -hmm. and that's going to be your life now. We're going to bring you over to America, and you're going to live with us now. There are going to be some changes around here, bud. We're going to have joint custody, but split still. Like, I don't want to see him. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, and then at his house, you're going to be picking up imaginary objects and doing a lot of improv. No, at my house, we'll be doing a lot of drugs. Yeah. Because that's what I do, is a lot of drugs. A lot of drugs. People like ask house. me, hey, what do you do? I'm like, I, a lot of drugs is what I do, actually. Yeah, Thank a you. lot of drugs. No, Was the, the improv story real, by the way, before we get out of here? It was a hundred percent factual. I'm almost. A, I was actually seriously <laughs> trying to, and, and I'm. I'm not actually ashamed to say I was trying to become a male gigolo. I thought there must be sort of lonely old ladies out there that even just you know just would like to be seen. I was like, I was in my early twenties. Like you know, I'm a young, relatively all right guy. Like surely there must be a lady who wants to pay me to hang out, go to galas and balls with her. Yeah. But uh, as it happened, just a lot of horny dudes. We've all had that fantasy at one point or another. As a dude in our life, it's like, oh, man, I bet you I could meet somebody who's just going to pay me to fuck her. Um, the closest I ever got was dating a doctor, and she had so much money. She was always on call that she just left in the middle of, like, every meal. It was a terrible relationship, but she just threw wads of cash down wherever we were at, and I was like, oh, all right, cool. She was like, maybe I'll see you later. 
That was the closest I got to like. <laughs> the closest I ever had to love. Yeah, that was it, man. Oh. And it was weird. And I was like, yeah, maybe the gigolo thing isn't that fun. Because then they can just tell you to get the fuck out of there when they're done. Yeah, I had a whale of a time with 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 my guy, but I didn't actually have to fuck him. So I guess that's uh, he tried to move the whole operation back to his house um, after about three months, <laughs> thinking that he'd sort of lured me into his web. <laughs> and then he had a door behind a door behind another door with a little tiny door <laughs> and it was two bean bags and some playstation it's like i've seen this trick before <laughs> <laughs> barnes courtney thank you for joining us today my man uh tell everybody where they can find you on social media and uh, and get the album because it's fucking lights out oh just type uh barnes courtney with no e into any sort of search engine social media platform mm. What and about you'll find Pornhub? Is it on Pornhub? Yeah, you on Pornhub at all? I, I mean, I I did become quite a sensation on Gay Tumblr in 2011, but I don't think that's a thing anymore. Ah, gay Tumblr. There's no. still Black Twitter, but I don't know about Gay Tumblr. No, they took away all the nudity and everything on on Tumblr, oh, so well, that's, that's all done. That's, that's, no one goes to Tumblr anymore. No, no, nobody yeah, uses exactly. Tumblr anymore. That's it. It was all for porn. Terrible. Uh, Barnes Courtney, we appreciate you being here. Uh, check, look, check out his last album um, and your videos. Your music videos are lights out as well. Whoever's doing those, um, you absolute charmers, you two. I, I genuinely huge fan, man. Um, so is my wife. Uh, we listen to your shit all the time. So uh, much continued success, and I hope you drop another banger of an album after this is all over. For Danthony, Danthony Holloway, Barnes Courtney, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Later.